Hey guys and gals, I think this is going to be the last installment of the Lunar New Year Parade by LEGO, set number 80111, and this is the Chinese Festival Special Edition. So, so far I've been happy with the build. This is the last float. Looks pretty interesting. It's like it's just LEGO bricks. So, take a look here. And I got a rant for you. Some people just crack me up sometimes. So some nice artwork. Yeah. It's always cool looking at the inserts. You don't really get this feel from the uh, tablet version. So this is the uh, build together, like the collaborative stuff. So everybody gets their own manual and we're right here. So we got four bags to go through. I don't know why we need four, but we'll see. And that's where we're starting today with figures. Yes. I'm hoping that's printed. It looks like it is. I'm always after printed stuff. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know what it is with people thinking, especially doctors and stuff. You know, calling my house at 8 in the morning, expecting me to be up. And keep calling me every like every 15 minutes on the hour or every 15 minutes on the minute, trying to just to confirm an appointment. And I finally got a hold of this place, and I was like, I told the lady, I said, "You guys kept calling my house to confirm an appointment." Yes, we were wondering what happened to you, and I said, "Oh." I said, "Well, I'm here now, you know." You know, I'm confirming my appointment. He has a two-sided head. Sad face and happy face. And, well, we're just confirming your appointment. And I said, you called me up at 8 in the morning. I said, what do you think most people are at at 8 in the morning? Oh, I was assuming that you were awake. I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm off work. I, I turn off the phone. I only screen for certain calls. I'm sorry, but you're not on that list. And plus, their number is always on, um, is always private, so I s permanently just screen those out. Okay, so this boy's got a bowl cut. Well, that that's a throwback to the '80s. I never had one of those. It was a different type of bowl cut, but never had that. So I'm just like, you know, not all of us are farmers and stuff. So it looks like we got ourselves some kind of a card. Not sure what that is, but there we go. We got that one done. So I'm just like, please, uh, I'm off. I don't want to deal with anything, you know, unless it's life threatening, you know, that kind of thing. Oh hell! I hope I grab the right torso for the kid. Um, no, I didn't. I got the torsos backwards. Now. It's one of those days, I, I can tell you. But, I mean, I was just like, they called my house about eight or nine times just today alone. Just to pester me about something. To confirm an appointment. I'm like rolling my eyes. Thinking, you know. I, I try not to flip out on this late, but, you know, I'm just like, you know, not all of us are, uh, we get, not all of us are bright-eyed bushy tail at eight in the morning. I mean, I didn't get out of bed till after twelve. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you get up at, you know, on work days, you get up at 3 a.m. in the morning, you know, I want to know what it's like to sleep in. And that's exactly what I did. I slept in. The only time I sleep in is somebody wants my, uh, wants to contact me. I'm like, you guys have a text service. Why don't you just text me, and when I get up, I'll type C to confirm. I like that bandana on her. Pretty cool. And yes, I know I'm ranting, but sometimes after a while, it's like, um, just let me sleep. These guys get off on the weekends. They have a normal, they have a normal nine to five Monday through Friday job. You know, I don't. Oh, there's more to this minifigure. I thought we were done. So maybe this whole bag is just minifigure stuff. Ooh. <sighs> 
Well, you can tell I'm not a fan of minifigures, especially when half the build just involves them. But I was like, don't call. I, I just told her, I said, next time you want to call, call me late. I'm a late person. Don't call me up at that time in the morning. Uh, I, I like I like to sleep. You know? uh, I like to sleep. I don't want to be woken up. And that's what you got to do five times. But yeah, I mean, end of rant. <laughs> but I was just like, no, I am not getting up early for anybody. Unless it's absolutely an emergency, but, you know. I live in like a farming town. So they assume everybody's a farmer here. And how I know that is another tech guy that I, that I know here in person, a colleague of mine, they do the same thing to him. He goes, he goes I, I stay up late at night doing graphics and stuff, graphic arts for uh, websites and stuff. Here I am going to bed pushing 4, 4, 5 in the morning. Next thing you know, someplace wants to call me up at 8, 8.30. I'm like, yeah, they think everybody everybody in my area gets up at 6 a.m. in the morning, you know. No, some of us don't. <laughs> some of us prefer to stay up all night long. All right. So this... Um, wait a minute, hold on. So he has the card. Boy, that rant really did throw me out of a loop. i got to get more of those bowl cuts. You know what? Too bad that wasn't like a fade around there. Then you can call it the Egger cut, huh? <laughs> oh man, I can have a lot of fun with that. Alright, let's do that. So she's got this little streamer thing here. I don't know what those are for. Maybe it's uh, uh, firecrackers, I don't know. Well, she'll just have to topple over. Um, and no, we're not going to spend an hour talking about the minifigures. You're on the wrong channel for that one. So yeah, it's like, I am not a farmer. <laughs> And I'm not a morning person either. I am cranky in the morning. I just do not... At night, when I'm tired, I'm pretty nice and and fun and stuff. And where everybody else is half asleep and groggy and stuff. Here, I'm awake. Right now, it's like the middle of the day, so I'm, I'm awake. Remember that last one, I kind of made a boo-boo, so I need to follow the instructions down to the T on this one. So I don't know how far I'm going to work in this segment here. I may take breaks throughout the day on this one. I'd like to get this built as soon as possible to to get it done and reviewed. Um, like I said, I have a bunch of offers I have to go through, and it's going to be a bit of a brute. So I think they just use these as spacers here. You know, like identifiers and stuff. We skip that, but maybe that's where we put it. Yeah. Yep, so anyways, though, I'm just um, enjoying my time without any um, requirements. Like right now, I'm doing the Lego stuff. And I'm doing the Lego stuff because it's relaxing. And I'm not looking at a computer. Hmm. Huh. Is that not supposed to fit there? Will not line up. Well, there we go. If your gears don't line up, you're just going to have to wiggle them in. I don't like pressing these up here all the way. I just want a little bit of slack so, you know, it's not too much tension. So we're going to put the bevel gear here. And the bevel gear needs to be facing towards us. So first got to find it. Usually they're tan. Oh, there it is. Right there. As long as it's facing us, that's fine. Okay. Let's 
Yeah, we'll just throw those on there. Yeah, so, so far I've been pretty satisfied with the build. See, here's the one-to-one -one thing here. So we need to get one of these tires. Ugh, Only like two o'clock and I'm tired. That's a sign of actually being relaxed. Okay, and a bushing. Yeah, I go visit my doctor. I'm going to tell him again. You guys don't call me up at 8 in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I want to sleep. You guys always tell us we need plenty of rest. Well, I, I don't go to bed at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock at night. I'm not... I'm old, but not that old. <laughs> I like staying up late, uh, playing on my iPad, playing video games, doing all that fun stuff. You know, not like, oh, the sun's going down. Time for bed. I got to get up for early morning harvest. Uh, I'm sorry. I like to stay up late. <laughs> all right. I think that'll be the end of rant. Uh, all right. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff to line up in here, too. So you just have to just slowly tack it in and push it in place. And then we're just... By now, these are kind of redundant. The frames are pretty much universal. It's just the this right here you'd have to mess with. See how stiff this feels? So something in here needs to be loosened up a bit, or is it just the amount of gears... First, I was rubbing in here. Maybe it's just all this stuff here. Wouldn't there be a bushing against this? There we go. I mean, it's just... I don't know, it just feels kind of stiff there. I don't know what the deal with that is. Another warm day, although they say later on the week we're going to get down to the low 50s out here in the daytime high. I want to be able to wear a sweater or something. <laughs> Usually for a gift, people will always buy me like winter clothes and stuff like that. And I'm like, well, these are cool. If it gets cold, of course, they, uh, like my family and stuff lives in a colder climate than I do. So I'm like, you know, it gets cold at night in the desert, but in the daytime, it's, uh, different beast. Okay. Okay, so I noticed the first bag in these sections go pretty quick. They go pretty quick. And then the next thing is the wheels. Start installing these. You know, really, when there's this heavy detail in these builds, you really can't go any faster. It's like, can you can you multitask? Not when it's like, you know, little pieces that you're pretty much putting on. Like you could do the tires and stuff, but um, you know, that's kind of hard. It's just. You think there'd be some kind of rubber on these to give it more grip on a counter or something, like on a flat surface. Yeah, but so far, for this being a set that I would never really be interested in, well, I'm pretty interested in it now. <laughs> it's pretty, uh, pretty unique. Alright, we'll flip that over like a pancake and then we're ready to go. As long as this is on this side here, because we got to match up these colors. And usually that stuff is critical. At least it's color coded where the front and back is at. You know, for people like myself who just don't really pay attention. Though it would be nice if they made that one like, like a lime green or something. That would have been cool. All right, getting pages stuck together. That's how I'm messing up in the past. All right. So yeah, pretty much the bases of these things are pretty much 
the same old thing. Well, no, this one's a little different. And a few of my buddies got back and from snowboarding and stuff and telling me how great their vacation was. And I just kind of didn't. I said, why don't you guys invite me? And he goes, oh, well, I thought you were busy with work. I thought you were working. And I thought, when have I since worked on during winter time? Oh, well, you wouldn't have liked this anyways. I said, okay, cool. I didn't want to be like, hey, you know, thank you for thinking about me. You know, thinking for me, but I just kind of left it. I don't know. And then, of course, one of them asked me for a ride, because he doesn't even own a car. And the same thing they did to me. Crickets. I'm busy. <laughs> I don't want to be bothered, but he called me at a reasonable hour, too. Like, just like crickets. Hmm. Sometimes those are hard to get in. All right, we're getting pretty close now to finishing this setup here. And then once I'm done, I got a bunch more to do after this. And I'm not sure how, how interesting they are, so I don't really know yet. But I do know that we will uh, we'll be building them. You know, don't judge the box. Whatever you don't, when you see a set on the shelf, don't judge the box, you know. Now I see why a lot of people do the reviews. Just don't judge the box. <laughs> Won't do you any good. Alright, just about there. We just got bricks and one of these left. Alright. And... Okay, you're going to have to rotate these around here and stick this brick on there. And then you're going to have to use this to stabilize it. Boy, that just does not want to turn. Boy, look at that. Hold on, stand by. Something is just... Like, something here is just not letting me rotate that. It's the right height, all right, but it just, like, I'll get it on there, and it just, like, okay, finally. So you're going to have to struggle with that a bit. That's kind of a bad way they did that there. It's barely hanging on, too. Okay, it does work, but, and that's it. Oh, well, yay, more stuff. And we've only got one piece left, too. Let's see what. Bag 8 has to offer us. Okay. Get all these lids out of the way here. And I actually found a bin for all the stuff that goes to the set. Well, we obviously got to start with a sticker. <laughs> and, a, and a minifigure, so we're getting a double one there. I know there's some that said they wanted the set just for this purple minifigure. And I'm like, uh, do it, does it really matter? I mean, it's a minifigure. If it was like cool yellow or spring green bricks or something very exotic, I'd be all over that, but, um, you know. He or she, it's got a two faced head, it looks more like a, a gal. Oh, wait a minute, we've got to put the tanks on next. Yep, so spend another ten minutes just doing with minifigures alone. I like to build big things, not this little stuff. Okay, we're gonna sit here and we're gonna talk we're gonna sit here for an hour and talk about the theory of this minifigure. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not gonna do that here. And we gotta put a sticker on that tile too. I don't really have a lot of these three by three tile with bows. But I gotta put a sticker on that. And I, that reminds me, where is the sticker sheet? Okay, so here it is, and that's the only one left. Let's make sure it's number two, and that's exactly what that is. So Let 
I'm really surprised the gardeners haven't came by yet to rev up their gas lawnmower. Well, I got on there as straight as I could. I'd say this set now has dropped down to a 7, sadly, just because it's stickered. You know. I'm very hard on that. You know, if, uh, if, if Lego can't just print everything and just charge a few bucks more, I'm willing to pay it. I pay, I pay for printed parts, and they're expensive. But, you know, I'll pay it. You know why? Because I prefer the printed stuff. There you go. I think that's it. We got another one. I think each bag has got two minifigures apiece. So I have four bags. So I got to put together eight of these little boogers. Yeah. That's a neat little coat. Oh, I got the heads backwards. Okay. Back to the drawing board again. I gotta take this apart. Yep. Like I said, you spend ten minutes messing around with just the figures alone. And then you get to do the fun stuff. So while we have all these parts here, that's it. Same head though, I just put it on that one. Make sure the torso's right. One time I put the torso on backwards on one of my figures. And I wasn't paying attention, I was just reviewing it at my early heydays. And man, some people got pretty brutal about it. And I gotta make an accessory. Is there any more minifigures after this, or what? No, we get to do the fun stuff. Cool. Alright. Um, so that's a bushing. Okay. And... Well, why are we doing it that way? I'm not going to fish that all the way down in there. That's kind of silly, Lego. What are we doing there? So I'm just going to do it my way. Stick the green one on first. It'll save you some headaches. And stick that on like that. There you go. I'll show you in the manual here when I get this thing done here. Looks like a piece of candy. It's probably what it is. It'll be very hard on your teeth. So they want you to do that. Then you have to fish it down backwards. Why don't you start with the green one, go halfway, and then readjust. You know, it's uh, it makes more sense. I don't know if somebody was being lazy writing up the manual or what. And finally, we get to do the fun stuff with float. All right, so we got to put the skirt. This time I'm re reading very carefully, and we just have to place these on here. Okay, so. And then what we're going to do, we're going to do what we did before. We're going to work on both sides. Uh, they want you to do one side at a time. That's, you know, dragging out the build. We don't want to do that. That takes too long. I mean, I'm on a deadline to get these done, and I don't want to spend all day doing it. I, I don't mind building stuff, but not when I'm under a lot of pressure getting it done here. You know. <laughs> yeah. All right. Really not a lot of troubleshooting with this one here. Um, okay, we actually did both of them. Wow, that's kind of cool. So start one side. We're actually we're doing both sides. Okay, so this is not too bad. Maybe we're maybe they learned after all the manuals, people were getting bored of it, huh? Make four of these. Well, make four of these. Make sure it's on really good. And then you're just supposed to go like that. Well. These are coming off. Yeah, those plates are still kind of unstable. So, this will snug everything up. Oh yeah, I did hint to my family. It's like, you guys want to go snowboarding for the day? Or go play in the snow? And they're like, oh, why would we want to do that? Why don't we stay here where it's warmer? That's <laughs> like, yeah, okay. 
and that's pretty much what we're doing now. Okay, I'm missing. Oh, there it is. It's like we're missing one of these now. Um, that's like that sounds like fun. Just to go play in the snow for the day because we don't ever see it. I would rather stay here. I want to stay here where it's warm. Like, oh, okay. Well, I guess some people like the sandbox more than the snow. Okay. All right. Enough ranting there. Um, these are cool. I wish they'd make uh, more versions of this. Like maybe make a version like that. Or like a version like that. But these bigger ones are good for like putting bumpers and stuff on things. Or that's probably what we're using it for here. It's like a bumper. Just about 25% done. I bet that blue is going to get buried in there. Yeah, I've noticed some of my blue is starting to turn like a greenish blue. And it is in a sealed bin. So I don't know what's going on with that. I know Lego does. Blue does that. Um, I know white starts yellowing. And you could take peroxide and you can pretty much restore those. I don't know if it breaks down the 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 prop the chemical properties in the plastic. But it's something that I would not uh, do it all the time. So if it's if it's a piece you care about, you know, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> Let's see. Here we got to make two of these or just place two of them here in this all right, hold on. I think these are actually supposed to be tucked behind here a bit more. Okay, so put these... When you build this, put these 1x2s in first as a marker, so they're like this. I couldn't really tell in this manual until I really looked at it. Let's see right here. And we got this green brick just floating in here. <laughs> All right. And here's something you don't see is some of these sand green pieces that for the Technic stuff. I claim that's uh, oxidized copper too. It looks pretty cool. And it's like we're building part of a car here. Okay, that's a good combination there. And So they want us to stick these on here and push these pins all the way. I'm just going to do them as I go. you got to make two of these. Mm. Man, I'm really getting myself injured. Just got cut. So when people say that Lego is a safe toy, it is not. That's why, uh, disclaimer alert, these are not meant for children. Especially when you're trying to fight Technic pins. That now is putting me in a bad mood. <laughs> Show's got to go on still. And we got a medium nougat 2x8 plate. We'll set that on there. Well, how are you supposed to set that on there? This doesn't even line up. Oh, there it goes. Let's see, that doesn't fit, but there it is. It does fit. So you got to make sure that's really forced in. And I think it goes right in there. I think there's supposed to be a gear, and that's exactly what that is. Get one of these Technic nails. This is a five stud long, or six. If you want to know, just put it up against here. See? It's five studs. And... Man, that really did cut my... At least it's not right by the nail. So, we stick the gear in there. And then we're going to just shove that like that. And this just rests inside here. Alright. So yeah, that bevel gear is right up against that too. So if it turns, we're done. That feels kind of stiff though. I think we're trying to slow down the 
to think of that a bit. Okay. So, let me put it back to where I understand it better. Alrighty. And some of these. We gotta make two of these real quick here. No, we just need to make one. Guess we have to clear around that gear. See, I have to keep checking the camera because the thing may overflow. Okay, you got a turntable, 4x4 turntable. We're going to set that right on top. Now, I really want to make sure this is really forced down. How do you do that? With the gear in the way, you just have to really stick your fingers down in there. Now, if you can't do that, just take a plate or a tile or something. Just hold in there and just press down. You really want that to be seated in. So... Um, you really can't get to that medium nougat plate that well. So you're just going to have to just... Or you could just hold on to the gear and just push that in too. And it, there you go. As long as it still works, we're fine. And then there's some cool yellow tiles. I need to get some of these. These make great curtains for uh, windows and stuff. If you have like a white or a different colored thing around your glass, like around your window, you could use those for curtains. Okay. Some green blue or blue green studs. You can always use those. Studs, you know, are kind of like a useless part, but they make great stones and stuff, you know, like if you're building, like imagine using these inside of a riverbed. Any color. And you would just put like transparent light blue or ch transparent blue, clear, uh, black, transparent black um, um, tiles. You'd actually have a nice water texture, which works really good. I've done it with my backcountry camping, and it just makes things pop out. And, you know, because it, it looks more, it has depth. Some people stick blue. Just stick the studs in it. You know, you, every every collection, everybody's collection probably has more studs than you know what to do with. So, it makes a great little building technique. And then we're going to have to build two of these here. Okay. So you get a little bit of strategies while I'm doing this, too. But well, see, when I build stuff, I see these pieces that I think, man, I could use these. Like these. Use those for a pumpkin. That's, I don't think I use those in my brick pumpkin, but... Okay, those right there. Okay, so it's like that on the side. I'm going to do this one here. We haven't, done this, we haven't done the skirting around the side of the float yet, so... Um, And then these go here. Okay, they go here. It, they're offset. I thought maybe they fit on that. No, you have to offset them a bit. And then you take one of these upwards angular plates and just a stud. You need to make two of these and set these here. You, you, you may forget that. I know I almost did. I looked at that thinking, wait, what are we putting there? You know. So far it's looking pretty good. It's just we're just setting up the we're setting up the stage here for the fun stuff. And now um we're working here. So you're gonna be tempted to put that up against there. No, you don't. Put that there, leave a space in the back here and I'm just looking at things that if I know I make a mistake I know somebody else would probably too because uh, I know I would and we're just gonna wrap around this with some orange Got one of these okay well there's two of them and we got to crown them off with tiles and that'll wrap up this bag here <laughs> 
So we're getting pretty close. This is getting getting done here. And this goes right on top of that right there. It sits right on that plate. So yeah, despite of what these look like, I've only had a few pieces fall off on one of these, but so far they're pretty sturdy. And that's it. We're ready to start bag nine, and yay, look, more mini figures! And my, I'm so excited, now we can talk ten more hours about those. Now we can take a look at bag nine. Well, I'm seeing a bunch of little things rolling around, so this is it. Probably means we're going to be here for a while with details. All right. Honestly, that's a really nice color. Well, lots of nice colors in that. Okay, so we got to do mini figures. Is this all the figures we're doing? Okay, just two. On at least they're on the same page, but we got a sticker to put on another tile. Yeah, you know. I just don't like the stickers on this stuff, but I have to put them on. Well, at least I got the right head on this one here. Many finger stands. Oh wow, I actually got him done. I haven't found the only thing I, I haven't found anything for the other one yet, but there it is. Trying to find, oh, there's the legs. I hope we don't have to put any stickers on these lime green ones. And yes, I could just order them, but well, they're provided to me for, well, I'm not going to say free because I got to review this stuff, you know. <laughs> but if they're provided to me, I don't want to have to peel them off. In fact, I need to get on the ball and start taking apart a, a bunch of other sets. I may make videos on how I do all that stuff if anybody's really interested. They'll be on this channel though because it'll be more raw. Okay, now we got to build all the accessories and stickers and stuff. So we got to put a sticker on that tile. Let's do that real quick and get the paint out of the way. This is sticker number five. And then we will stick that on there. And that is written in Chinese. Somebody will hand something and say, hey, Jay, can you read this? And I'm like, this is in Chinese or Korean. I can't understand. If it's Japanese, I can make it out. But if it's in Chinese or Korean, I can't understand it. It's like I said, it's like having, it's like having English, Spanish, uh, French. Yeah, they use the same character sets, but not really. I need to find one of those little tan things. I'm trying to see if I can see the stick here for it. But we got to put together something else. Looks like it might be candy or something. I don't know. So basically, he just sits there and holds this up. Pretty cool. Honestly, though, if this set was fully printed, no stickers. Easy nine. I'd say it'd be about a nine, nine and a half. Just for the build experience. And see, I don't see any more of those sticks in here. Let me go and check the uh, the miscellaneous bin real quick. There's actually one in here. Okay, so there you go. <laughs> I don't want to have to spend all, all day looking for that. And then i got to find some hobble studs. Um... Yeah, it's just three, uh, no, it's three stud flowers. Okay, I thought they were hollow studs. And you stack them on there. I'll just do it like this. It'd be easier to do that anyways. All these big parts, and what am I doing tripping over for the small stuff here? Alrighty. I don't know what that's supposed to be. Obviously, it's not a marshmallow or anything. All right, and that takes care of the minifigures. So there you are. Okay. Now we got to do the float. All right. Now, um, I just noticed this. We need some tiles. There's four in here, and there's one buried right behind there, so don't forget that one. I just saw that right out of the corner of my eye, and I was like, well, 
I better mention that real quick. That should have been put on when we were doing the base of this, because then you don't have to reach all the way down in there. Yeah, when you uh, build this stuff, make sure you have a bin that you keep all your loose parts in. Don't throw them back in your collection right away, because uh, sometimes they'll uh, put parts in other bags, like if they have extras. So they count sometimes the extra they give you, and you have to go back in and fish it out, and that's kind of brutal. So you don't want to have to spend a lot of your time trying to hunt for parts, because then it will degrade your... Uh, your build experience. Like right now, I'm I'm fumbling for one of these, you know. And these go in the back. Oh, right here. Okay, and then okay, making sure I'm recording. <laughs> uh, we got to get a crate. And there's a flower right next to the crate. So what I'm going to do, and I only ask for one flower, one crate. Well, obviously, here's the crate, but I need to find a red flower. I think they use this as a spacer, so set that in there. And just set your crate in there, and that's brittle brown, too. They said they fixed the problem, but I've been seeing some guys saying that they've been having issues. we got a bigger crate here. So I'm going to throw some stuff in there. One of those green hats. There was a hard hat that I saw in here. It was a, a white one. There it is, and there's a red one. Maybe this is the uh, roadside crate in case we break down or something. Oh, there it is. Now I'm waiting for Lego to bring out a 3x4 flat tile for these. Like, give it like a wood finish, like, you know, to make it look more like a crate, like a profile. See, that doesn't even fit on there. I'm having a hard time. Let's pop all those out of there and see if I can relay them. Let's put the big one at the bottom. I think you just have to pack them in in such a way. you got big hands, you are going to be in deep doo-doo. Let's see, did that get it? So I'll take it apart and I'll show you how I did that. So, stick the white one down in there and just stick the green one and this one upside down and uh, fits right on there and that's supposed to set in there I think it's supposed to, do we set it in there or we press it in there? It looks like it's pressed in there okay oh there's supposed to be a feather on that ha green hat too well what am I going to do? I'm not going to put that feather. I'm just going to drop that in there because I doubt that's going to fit in there. All right. Um, that will be a pain to open up, so I don't think I'll... When I do the review, I probably won't even mention that. I can't cover it all, though. Okay. So they want us to do one thing at a time. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do both at a time. I don't want to spend all day doing this. And then two of these. Okay. And then we're going to shove these here. So I'm assuming there's one on the other side too. So we'll just put that over there now. I'm going to do both of those at the same time because it speeds up the build a little faster. I mean, you don't want to be here all day putting that together. I'm not even halfway through the book yet. We're already on bag nine. So, yeah, I mean, alrighty. Okay. There's a bunch of pieces that go in here at one time. And I'm assuming it's the same on this side too. OK. 
Okay. And so now we have to use a bunch of... Now we're putting all the frilly stuff on now, so... What I'm going to do is start working on it now. These are pretty easy to grab, so I'm going to grab them first. As I see a bunch of these, and we'll start lightening up the load here a bit. Skip a stud, place that there. And it shows one of these plates with bow. They go here to kind of curve inward. And that's pretty much it. So this side's already done here. Not quite. Well, that didn't even go in. Well, that ripped the stud right out of there. That's just sitting there. Okay, let me take a look here. There's a stud there. It sits on the stud, but what are we doing here anyways? Did I make a mistake back there? Well, it's not supposed to go back all the way. Because it's even here. There's a stud here, and the stud's back here. Now, let me pop that out. Maybe we're doing something wrong here. And of course, you can't get them out of these little plates. It shows the stud here, but why would you have that hang in there? I mean, it's right here where I'm having my problem. Maybe that's just meant to hang there. Why would you have that hang there for? Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. All right, let me... I think I'm looking at this the wrong way. We're supposed to skip a stud. So if you skip a stud here, this goes here. And then this goes on top of it like that. Okay, now that makes sense. I was looking at that kind of funny. It's like, well, that's barely hanging on. And you take one of your taco shells and you stick it there. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what they were thinking there. So this is, this is right. So, well, no, that's how it is. That's just supposed to sit on that. Really? Because it's tucked in here, but there's nothing behind that. Let me take a look. There's a plate right underneath that, a red plate. Let me look again. I just don't like the way that looks. Because See, here it is here. And then there's that plate. You barely see it, and they want you to set that right on top. And that looks just like that. So that just sits in there. There's nothing underneath that. I mean, I, I guess, okay, you know, I was doing it right all that time. It just didn't make any sense. I thought maybe there'd be something below that that would actually prevent that from caving in. But no, there's not. You know, unless I'm having one of those moments, but... Oh, it's the stuff in the container. I was like, what's rattling on that? I was looking at that thinking, that doesn't make any sense. Okay. Here it's the same thing, but they show it attached. There's something wrong here. I mean, like something totally wrong. Um... This is where this is supposed to be here. This plate is all the way up against here. Oh, wait a minute. You know why none of this stuff is lining up? This. Well, if I can get it off there. It's supposed to be pushed back here. I couldn't tell. Now, like I said before, I'm partially colorblind. And Lego doesn't provide us with any uh, outlines for parts. So I can't tell really. And this is all red, so you know how fun that's going to be for me. So this goes here. 
and now this fits if I can pick it up. So that that's just kind of goofy, you know. I'd like to say the F word, but I'm not going to do it here. That's kind of that's kind of screwy. So this actually hangs over and get a little aggressive with it since it's just so yeah, you know, Lego. I'm lazy, but I'm not lazy when it comes to putting outlines for my parts. So, you know, please do us a favor and do the same. Yes, I know it takes a little bit more ink, but it actually saves steps in the long run. It saves a headache. I need to start doing stuff more for handicap accessible people like myself. All right. There's, I mean, this is all red at this point, so yeah, I'm, the bright red is fine, but the dark red's kind of washed out for me. Now that fits in there. Okay, goes like this. Okay, that would make sense for that sitting on top of that. I think that's all we're putting in here now. Now, it, now I've got that sitting right on that. That's how it's supposed to work. All right. And no, it wasn't because I was doing the mirror stuff. Um, you know, sometimes things like that happen. And I will not filter that out because it may be a help to somebody else who's watching this. All right. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. And then we got to put some tan ones. We're not even done yet with this step. So now we're going to get to the nitty gritty here. We're actually putting details on this. So all this now is going to be detailed. So we're going to be messing with that there. Some cool yellow ones of these too. Um. Hope you can see that. Sometimes the camera angle on this is not that good, but you know, it's meant as a rough build. It's not. This is not to be construed as a complete building tutorial. It goes like that. Okay. I think they would have put a tile on that unless they were going to use that for something else. And my lawn sprinklers just kicked on. <laughs> yeah, in December we got to watering our yards. All right, I'm looking for another cool one here. All right, so that takes care of that. It looks pretty close. Somebody asked me how big my uh, filming studio is. Trust me, it's pretty tiny where I'm at. Like this from here to here, I only got two feet to work in. So I don't really have a big area to, to do this stuff. On the videos, it seems like it goes on forever, but no, it, real life it doesn't. Okay, jumpers and one of these Let's fit right in there. Now I've already found it. I'm going to put it in here on this side now. Okay, and we haven't gotten that far yet. Yeah. yeah, after a while I do get tired of putting stuff together. And then the next thing is these. Go right in the middle here. And then there's like 
a one by one and a one by two plate that go in here. If this is really meant for little kids, my goodness gracious, really going to have to watch what they're doing on this. And I dropped something on the floor. It's always something that's round. I never drop like big old plates and stuff. It's always one of these little uh, stud flowers or studs or round bricks. Something to just get hooked on you and they just fall on the floor and they're kind of a pain to pick up. All right. All right, so the next thing is after that is, well, at least it's a little bit bigger stuff now. Well, we'll start on this side here. Now, let's start on this side here because that's the one I'm working from right now. Um, and there is, wait, hold on. Okay, let me start with this first. Okay, now it makes sense. Put this there. And then there's a, a jumper plate that goes on top there. It doesn't look like it would fit there, but there it is. It's all done. So I got to do the same thing over here. I'm going to start with this first as a guide. It looks like it's offset right here, but it's actually all flush. It's just all those different colors kind of throws you off. And then, um, those round plates. I usually use these to anchor lights to a house. All right. And the next thing is is a bunch more uh, fancy smancy stuff. So we're going to go back over here and do that again. Is there anything that goes there? Oh, there's a little tile that I forgot all about. Okay. Um, it's like, is that going to be anchored down to something? No, we're going to have to put that there. Obviously, I forgot this one here. You know, I ordered a bunch of those for taco shells, and yeah, <laughs> this set's got plenty of them. I don't need them now. They can always use extra. What does that mean? Well, could be another restaurant build in the works. We don't know yet. Just don't need that kind. Okay, we got a problem here. Okay, these are not supposed to be here. I missed a plate. I'm just going to pop both those off at the same time. And it's supposed to be a 1 by 2 there. Lego, you need you really do need to highlight your parts cuz this red is just kind of brutal on my vision. So you got to put that in there first. Okay, it takes care of that. Thanks for, oh, not even halfway done yet. <laughs> My goodness. We are just detailing this booger all the way out, all the way to the end here. I need two of those. Uh, they go here. Two of the tiles. And I understand why they you don't work on both sides because I know some people get confused over it. It's like do it, flip over, do it, flip over. And you don't want to when you write up your own building guides, you don't want to keep flipping people over on pages like that. You don't want to keep flipping not flipping the bird, but flip over, flip over, flip over, because it gets confusing. Now if you're building this by yourself and you read ahead. Okay, okay, I got a pattern here. I can just rotate this around and then I can just proceed on with my business here. And that's what I'm doing. I know in the digital building guides though you can flip and rotate and stuff, so it usually makes it easier to do that there. Okay, 
There we go. Back on that side again. <laughs> I need to get a light that comes over here and lights up there a bit better. I've been looking at lighting and stuff. All I can find is uh, uh, cheap stuff that doesn't put out a whole lot of wattage. And just, oh wow, this is pretty brutal here. Uh, so, just trying to find a work light that's pretty decent. would be pretty cool. Yeah, so this is all little parts. If you are not a fan of this, just like with the other sessions. Ooh, wait a minute, that didn't want to go in. There we go. If you're not a fan of this, yeah, yeah you're going to have to stick it out. <laughs> There you go. But little parts do add a lot more resolution and detail to things. Um, I mean, look at that. My goodness gracious. Let's do the same thing here. Yeah, I hope my doctor's appointment goes well. Still need to get a physical done. Last time I had one, everything was perfect. Not one thing wrong with me, except for the asthma. But other than that, though, I mean, like their blood count was fine. And, uh, did all my my cancer screenings, and those came out fine. It's always the dentist that finds the issues. <laughs> Can't win them all, I guess. Okay, all those jumper plates we put on, we got to put a bunch of stud flowers on. Okay, we're going to start with the cloud first. Um, the cloud... Hmm. Wouldn't go there. But why do we have a tile here? Let me take a look. Oh, there's supposed to be a plate in there. Okay. I was like, why is that thing not fitting in there? There we go. <laughs> okay. And uh, stick those clouds on there now. Looks like a nice little car. Flower car. The cloud car. The vape car. Alright. Uh, now we got to take a bunch of orange stud flowers and just place them on all the jumpers. So we got four on this side and four on our reflective side. And oh yeah somebody did ask me what's my budget for Lego? About forty dollars a month. <laughs> uh, I only buy mostly parts. And I'm no big hurry to build up my collection. So that answers a question there. Um, you know, I know some guys who literally drop close to $1,000 in parts and sets a month. You don't need to go that crazy. Just buy what you need. You don't need to overflow your inventory. Um, you know, do these sets give me a lot of parts in my inventory? Honestly, no. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> um, now we got to rotate this thing around. I'm mostly into parts anyway, so I'm more of a parts collector. I'm not a set collector. I'm not into this hobby for, you know, for memorabilia. I'm in it just to enjoy the hobby and to build things. You'll put things together and create things and stuff. So, like, this has a lot of unique stuff. And I'll probably, most of this I probably will never use. But. Alright, so we need these. They go in here. These little type of pieces here. I was like, first I glanced at like, well, how, what what goes in there? No, that that's what goes in there. And then, so we're just working our way around the vehicle. I already sped up that time and just did that. And then there's a tile that goes in there. There you go. All right, we're almost halfway through the book. <laughs> Alrighty, we built these before, and these are like the little uh, 
they're little hitch assemblies so you can connect these up to one another you can make more of these if you bought a couple of these sets you could really kind of have fun with it or just make your own floats to expand on it these go in here but for storage they go right there which is pretty cool All right. now we have to go back and do this side of the vehicle now but guess what we already did that so we can just skip all that nonsense now until we get up to the cloud part okay so right here this is where I stopped <laughs> so see I just skipped up to about 60 percent of the book <laughs> Uh, it's like fast forward. Okay, I did all that boring stuff. Let's let's continue on there. We can uh, fight the pieces and get them on. Put that right there. Okay. Thought that was the little wind, the windshield, but no, it's not. All right, we're gonna build a Lego brick, but look, we gotta put stickers on that too. That's not too fun. Okay, for this right here, why does Lego do this, right? Okay. All right. Don't... That's hard to see right there. I, I interpreted that because I had to look at step number two to get to this point. Why they do that, I don't know. If you're going to start put start with the 2 by 6 put that on there. You're not going to save any steps doing it that way, Lego. It, you're going to confuse somebody to death. Somebody who's not paying attention It's doing this in a hurry it's a good way to make some more Lego bricks so what I'm going to do first which is what they recommend you just build this first here I'm sure here in the UPS truck come by today. All right, make sure these are lined up straight. The reason being is, is I want to make sure these are... I don't know if I'm going to keep the stickers on these or not. I don't know. Round tiles are not really particularly my favorite. These should have been printed because this would have been a great novelty piece here to have. Because sticking these on straight, here I got one on. <laughs> I have one of those on there. At least they're all the same number, so you, you got a bunch of number ones to do. And I got eight of those little puppies to put on. There you go. Looks legit, huh? But you can't build with those. Make use Lego to make your own Lego bricks. And this Lego thing here sits in right here. What a waste too. Because I'm gonna have to press that down in. I thought it's something we can easily remove. You want to make sure that's right, because you don't want to have to rip all that out. Now if your stickers are crooked, you can rotate those too. That's probably why they did that. Okay. And then we can proceed on here. And we're almost done with this bag, too. There's not a whole lot left. Wouldn't it have been easier just to stick those in the bricks first before we put them in there? Uh-oh, did they forget to pack one in there? Not like I don't have enough of those, but let's see. And I have the regular ones with the little shaft. I lost that bin full of parts. So, let me go get one. Stand by. Okay, I had to get one out of my collection. I couldn't find it in the random bin. Either that or it rolled in bag 10. Okay. Um... Or it could have rolled on the floor, too. <laughs> I may want to take a break because I want to fix me a dinner. And that's it. 
And there's bag 10. So what does 10 actually do? We're doing more of the flow. Let's see here. We're about 70% done with the manual. So here's some of these smaller pieces here. There's that stick we were missing. So sometimes things will turn up. And that's it. We'll take a breather there. All right, let's finish this up. Bag 10. Okay, had to do some quick tidying up first before I continued on here. And here we go. All right, so um, we've got two stickers left we got to put on, sadly. Now let's get going here. At least it's not, wait, no, no minifigures? Wow! Okay, I thought maybe we'd be putting like two or three more minifigures together. Oh, I meant to some. Oh, no, it's, we're going to have to cry. Actually, I'm happy there's no minifigures. <laughs> All right, need a couple of those. And, yeah, I had to step outside for some fresh air. <laughs> um, go outside and just um, kind of chill out. Okay, so we're doing the, no, this is just this. This is just accessory stuff here. So, could be fireworks, we don't know. Yeah, but at least this build is not a, wasn't boring by any means at all. Not at all. Alrighty. It's all little stuff now. Down to the nitty gritty. Need to find some more of those little cone pieces. Or these pyramid, one by one little pyramids. And we shove those. Oh, they go in this box here. Now one goes on this holder, the other one goes in the box. So it just sits in there. Is there a hole I can punch that down in through? Well, I guess you could set it inside the cross hole, so that's how it goes in. Of course, it's like that. It's kind of wiggly, but that's where it is. The other one's in this holder here i got to find. And yes, after I get done with this one, i got to start building another set. <laughs> this channel is going to be swamped, so... If you're watching this, you're going to probably see an upload or two every day until we're done here. So this channel is going to be kind of like, it's going to be on spurts. Like, I'm not going to just do these all at once. They'll just be spurts. Okay, that's how it is right there. If you're not sure, look at the next page. See, that's how it is there. And these are indeed these smoke pieces, but these are in... Uh, pearl gold, so yeah, be real. This thing really is vaping it up. We got clouds and smoke, yeah. This must be the vape mobile. <laughs> All right, let's set. All right, we got to go on this side here. Let's set three more of these. Right, look at all that's like a that's like building a base plate right there. Okay, and three of these. I still need a lot more of these for pumpkins and stuff too. So I gotta order a bunch more. I think I tr I try to order at least a few of them. Whoops! Every time I do a part order, just like ten or so. I don't even go out. I think I need like another eighty or ninety. So I order just slowly, you know, just very slow. So I may run into some with these sets that I don't have to go out and spend money on. <laughs> but I still order just to be sure, you know. I don't want to be over. I don't want my I don't want my inventory to lose its freshness. <laughs> Got it off of a movie. I've been watching work prints of movies lately, binge watching where it's just a rough um, work print. I watch a horror flick. I think it was Return of the Living Dead, and I watched Night of the Living Dead. Uh, work prints. One from I, th I think one of these movies was probably from the mid '80s, and one of them was from 1989, 1990. And watching the work prints is 
it's kind of it, it's kind of creepy in a way you know you can hear where the directors like saying cut and all that stuff but uh, watching those type of videos are always cool <laughs> um, just because it's uh, it's all raw and sometimes without the sound effects and stuff you know it kind of makes it feel more if you've ever played Minecraft you know what I'm talking about where it's just pretty quiet that's pretty much what it is I think we're gonna need those next I keep knocking over these stupid uh, smoke vape pieces I have a feeling these are gonna go on the front so I'm pulling them out now so if I find a part I'm pulling them out and those will definitely get stickers I have a gut feeling that they will and then we got to fill the remainders of these with uh, studs so after I get done with this guy here I what I do with the reviews that I get is I do a small, big, small, big, small, big set. So I mix them up. I don't want to do nothing but big builds. So after I get done with this one here, it'll probably be a very small build. And then I'll do a big one, and I'll do a small one, and I alternate just to break the monopolists up. Because I don't want to be doing, you know, nothing but 15, 1600 piece sets. And then get behind, and I just got a bunch of little ones to try to hurry up and catch up on. It doesn't do me any good. Okay, so I need this and a red tile. We need to place that bunny on there. Still got, actually, we still got, we got a bunch of stickers left on that. It wasn't just two. Yeah, I was a little too late on a Steam sale too. Like there was a couple games I wanted to buy and uh, they had a sale going on and I was ready to buy and I had them in my cart and sure enough when I went in there that's a little crooked but it'll just detract from the value um, when I went there to place my order um, it gave me an error just so I can refresh the app and then sure enough oh these items are not on sale anymore you gotta pay full price and I was like, ah, credit card went back in my wallet. <laughs> I was like, no, we are not going to mess with that. So I got to make four of these and stick stickers on them. I was going to buy Resident Evil. Um, there was this old PlayStation game. If you guys ever watched my live streams, 40 Winks, <laughs> I'd rage at that. I don't know why I stacked two of those on top of one another. And... And I can't even get those apart. So, I was like, well, I missed out on the deal. And they always have sales throughout the year. So I was like, well, I'll just hold off on that. Now, how do I keep the stickers straight on these? I'm going to stick them on a plate. Like that. And then I have something to hold on to here. Right, so there's eight more stickers to put on here well, after this one make it seven I can't get it on there right let's try holding it this way sorry you can't see what I'm doing I got that one right in the center too okay and then I can stick them on as I go. So this is going to be a, a, a lot of work in terms of doing this. Is I got to do one of these at a time. So that's not really fun, huh? I don't know if I'll keep these on there or peel them off when I'm done. I kind of wish they were printed. Or better yet, just have them raised. Okay, that one's done. Of course, you could just put them on there and rotate them too. But I just stick them on there, hold it like this, and then st stick the sticker on there. Now, 
Matter of fact, I was going to donate some old computers, you know, to you know families who another otherwise don't have any computers. These computers are like a few years old. Uh, Dell old Dell workstations that we'd use at our office that we no longer need. And if I was needy and I needed a computer to do my homework on, I wouldn't care what kind of computer it was. Well, some people get so picky. They want these high-end gaming computers. I'm like, you don't need that to do your homework on. So what happened was I was going to donate 22 Dell um, workstations. They're about six, seven years old. They're still good. You can still do research projects on and stuff. And to this local charity, like, well, how old are these computers? And I said, well, they're about six, seven years old. I said, they're still pretty good. They all work. And they're like, oh, we're looking for something that's maybe two or three years old. <laughs> I sat there and just thought, are we serious? You know, and uh, Lay says, yeah, we, you know, uh, you can't do anything on these older computers. I'm thinking, well, mine's a six, seven years old. I can do plenty on mine. Yeah, but that's the way we're doing things. I said, well, are you sure? I said, because if not, they're going to go into the scrap pile. They're going to get, they're going to get, they're going to get grounded up. They're going to get stripped and grounded up. Yeah, we're not interested in older machines like that. I said, okay. So I end up um, having them in the shop, start ripping them apart. Got about two-thirds done with them. And then I get a call. Somebody was interested in... Um, for the donation take them off my hands I'm like I'm sorry you're a little too late <laughs> they're gone I mean I'm ripping them apart oh well do you still have any left to guess I, said, I have like two of them but one of them somebody already wanted to buy from me I said the rest of them are just going to get scrapped out oh I was hoping we would have ca caught you and got them got them quicker I'm like well you should have uh I just kind of said well you know if you guys weren't so picky I would have gladly have given those to you because they were just going to be given. And some people are just picky. Some businesses are picky too. I got to straighten out that cross axle there. So I was like, well, well, that came apart. <laughs> now, this is going to be one of those things that's going to be a problem, huh? Snap that down in there. So snap it in there. Make sure it's straight. I'm matching the book. And I want to put this on here. You may have to fiddle with the gears underneath to line that up. There you go. Now it's going to do this. Okay. So, you know, I mean, I always get old computers throughout the year. And unless it's like an IBM 5150, which is pretty much now kind of like a collector's item, those I don't get rid of, period. But a lot of these older workstations, they're still pretty good for, you know, getting on the internet, checking mail, um, all that stuff. But when you get these charities that are just literally just picky, we well, we want them new. We want them like new condition. You know, these are these are from an office building. You know, they're from an office building. They've been re I refurbished them, and they weren't interested, so they went in the recycling bin. Which I, you know, I do that just to get rid of the stuff. I don't want to hang on to it forever. But when you get charities, you know, this stuff is given to you. I mean, at least it's been nice if they just took them off my hands and evaluated themselves, but they weren't too interested. So now there's probably some kid out there that can't do his homework because he doesn't have a computer. And, I mean, not a whole lot I can do. And when they contact me later on and say, hey, we're interested, no, that's uh, not going to happen. You should have jumped on the ball. I don't have time to to wait around for somebody to make up their mind. You know, I'm trying to clean out a shop uh, to make it into a Lego room, and to wait around for someone to to decide if they really want them or not. I did keep some of the parts for a Minecraft server, so I can do my Minecraft server. So now my Minecraft server will have uh, 32 gigs of RAM. <laughs> um, it's a little overboard for a Minecraft server, but it does help. It's a, and 
grabbed one of them had an i7 processor so I took that out of there too and then by the time I gutted some of these machines down got myself a pretty good souped up Minecraft server and wait hold on oh there's another one I didn't see that other one going on there but that just you know it's a charity, you know. I mean, just be glad that somebody like myself has given the stuff away, you know, because I normally would charge probably about a hundred dollars for an old workstation, you know. But when some of these organizations get so picky, it's like, you know, don't come, don't come crying to me. I'm not, I'm not here for that, you know. Don't come crying a river while I missed out. Oh. I have that one left I can sell you, but oh, you're not going to give it away. No, I'm not giving anything away now. Yeah. Just be glad it was uh, something I wasn't charging for. <laughs> oh, well, we don't have a 3x3 three three plate, and here we go again with this backward back buttering right here. I mean, come on, just let go do it like this, right? Start with these two first, place that on top. Then you stick this one on the top, and you have arrows going on the bottom. It makes more sense. It's the only place to put it. There, done. No. Yeah, so, but this story happened a few years ago. Now I don't even bother with it. I don't even donate. I have some, you know, charities will contact them like, nope, sorry. One of them was looking for a couple of used Xbox machines, and I'm like, I had a couple of them, but they were the old school Xbox. I said, they, uh, one of them was working, so I ended up giving it to a friend, and then the rest of them were just uh, kind of uh, they had a bunch of them had power supply issues, and they weren't really were saving like the, the power supplies were pretty much shot the uh, switching power supplies these are actually pretty cool and this goes here I guess when we drive around it's supposed to be like ooh the Lego bricks are spinning you know so you know and when I was a kid, I didn't have a new computer. I had an IBM 5150. Managed to get Windows 2 to work on it. Then I got 3.1. Windows 3.1 was sluggish on that machine. I think it had a 10 megabyte hard drive, and it was slow. I had I had internet. The only way to get internet on that thing was a modem, an external modem box, and that was it. I was happy. I had a computer. I had a printer. You know, I did my homework on, at that time, it was a 10-year-old computer. You know, I had Windows. You know, I had, I had some. A lot of my friends didn't even have a computer. You know, I had that one. I, I repaired it. I restored that machine back then. That was cool. That was considered e-waste back then. But I managed to do that. And now today, um, you know, that's... It, that machine now is just a collector's item. It's just a novelty piece. But I was grateful to at least have a computer. Then my dad uh, bought a bought a family computer. He had to share. I was probably one of the very few kids in my high school that actually had my own phone number. But I had to share that number with uh, the internet so I couldn't be on the phone while uh, I couldn't be on the phone while I was on the internet. There we go. That one's a little crooked but I can rotate that slightly. Okay, this one goes back here. Okay. 
Okay, how does that install anyways? Oh, it's even with the bottom one. Is it meant to hang over like that? No, it's not. It's meant to do that. Okay, I get the logos on right. Okay, pretty good. So yeah, uh, you know, and that's just how some people are, you know. Some places are picky. They want the new, the latest and greatest. And I was lucky to have a computer <laughs> with internet. Uh, the kids had to use the internet cafe. I didn't have to. If I wanted to hop online, oh, well, that fits perfect on there. This is actually a separate piece like that. I never figured about buying these for using for that. So I remember, I remember in school, we're talking about the the mid '90s. We had a we had an internet cafe we could use during lunchtime. Hard to believe it. Uh, I think I was 13 years, 13 or 14 year, years old when the internet came out. <laughs> so, uh, those internet cafes are pretty cool. Of course, the school's internet was always faster than mine. At homes, I just had that plain old dial-up stuff. That's all we had. And then DSL came out, which was just a tad bit better. And this is the last of the stickers here. And DSL was just a, a modern thing back then. And at that time, Wi-Fi was starting to become a thing. I know when I was in college, ready to start grad school, my parents bought me my very first laptop. Um... I think this is supposed to go in the tubes. Or no, it's supposed to go in these top parts right there. And I still have that laptop today. It's like 15 years old. The screen is starting to flicker on it. It's got lines running through it. It's not, it was never dropped or anything. I took very good care of it. Um, I remember I wrote my dissertation and my master thesis on it. I just can't get rid of it. Okay. What is this, the radio antenna to, for reception? That's kind of hard to put on there. So, yeah, um, talking about, you know, you know, some people are ungrateful today and. I have a lot of my stuff that I had when I was a kid. Still have the same car that my parents bought me when I was a teenager. You know, I just I just can't let go of that stuff. Now that car's worth money. <laughs> it's considered a classic now. I look at it thinking, eh, I don't know, you know, this does it doesn't look like a classic to me, but they classify it as a classic now, and it's hard to find parts. Matter of fact, a lot of mechanics now won't even really touch it, so i got to learn how to do the work myself. And I'm by all means not an auto mechanic, but, you know, i got to... I wish they'd make more small, lightweight pickups. I wish they'd make them electric would be nice. I'd be scarfing one up. That's kind of cool. You know, so now my car is considered a classic. All right, so, and then there's a dangly thing at the bottom here, one of these little dangly things, a little dangly chain. Oh, at least we don't have to make like five million of those, huh? I guess that's how it's supposed to be, but... 
There we go. It's just I don't want to force that any more than I have to. All right, and we got some more stuff we got to build too. This is all little stuff now, but. Looking for a one by two plate. Oh, there it is. We're getting to some really basic colors now. I think this goes on that one knob thing in the back. And it's kind of cool today, you know. A lot of the stuff that we grew up with back in the 70s and 80s, even the 90s stuff, it's uh, worth money. You know, it's, especially you go into an antique store and you see a bunch of these toys like oh I remember having that when I was a kid <laughs> you know, just sitting right there and it's like oh I remember having one of those those are actually worth something now it's like it's like He-Man and G.I. Joe I mean you know or My Little Pony if, if you're a brony those are and you have the originals when they came out man you got a heck of a collection there and no I don't judge if you are I know there's a another Lego enthusiast that actually is a brony and he collects all that stuff okay. he said he I asked him I said what why do you collect the my little ponies it's, it's just it's just they're cool to look at you know just like any you know like collecting Lego bricks some people collect Lego sets I collect bricks and unique pieces you know, this is just a hobby of mine. Um, so, and also I collect vintage stuff like vintage electronics. So I collect a lot of this old stuff, stuff that people would just toss out. One of my prized possessions is a Predicta, a Philco Predicta television. Um, I think it, I, th I think it might be. I think it was a tandem set. Um, it's just. A box with the screen mounted on the top kind of looks futuristic some you'd see like in the Jetsons and it was just a curbside find I mean back in the 90s the curbs were pretty fertile you could find all kinds of stuff now you can find BPCs or black plastic crap TVs um, from the 90s and the 2000s stuff that uh, I'll walk by and go that'd make a great destruction video <laughs> but I don't want to drag any more of those home sometimes I'll see something that's like the same model of a TV that I have in my collection that I'm trying to fix up for gaming or something so I'll stop the truck and throw it in the back a lot of guys now are restoring them uh, saying that they're um, that they're for retro gaming. Actually, this is kind of cool looking. Oh, getting tired. <laughs> that's another thing that's becoming more and more hot is uh, retro television sets. People are looking for more of the 19 or the 25 inch, uh, you know, the tabletops. Very few people want console televisions, but mostly the tabletops for the retro gaming. And I'm like, well, I can find them for you if I find something, and I'll find it. And they're not really interested because the cabinet's ugly. I'm thinking, well, yeah. If I, I sometimes I'll find a tube television where it's just vacuum tubes. It's it's not solid state. Those are the ones I will not get rid of. I, I hang on to vacuum tube stuff. So I will never get rid of those. Okay, this sits right on the top there. Hmm. Okay. That's what it looks like. Looks like we're adding a tail, so let's start building that. So yeah, a lot of the old retro stuff a lot of us grew up with is starting to become hot items. And, you know, a lot of the retro TVs. Uh, I got a 
stash of 19 inches. I got a bunch of 13 inches. That's what I grew up with. And of course I have my old Sony Trinitron that was probably, well maybe not Trinitron, but it was an old Sony television from 1971. That was my very first TV that my parents gave me. It was used, but I was happy to have a color television. <laughs> I need to restore that. Um, the only way to turn it on is by plugging it in. The switch was froze. And then the, um, it was kind of scratchy. It was missing the, UH, uh, the VHF knob. Luckily, in that time, I was in an area where only v UHF stations were around. So I just, like, yeah. And it wasn't remote control, but it was, a, it was a television. I think I put that on backwards. Yes, I did. i got to flip these around. Um, it was just a knob TV. You know, and... Uh, it had some more primitive circuit boards in there. Some of it was uh, wire ra wire wrapped, where they it was all uh, point to point wiring, or some of it was point to point wiring. Some of it was circuit boards. So back then they were kind of just messing around with circuit boards. My uh, my Predicta has a. Uh, it's got the primitive circuit boards in it. Alright, so this attaches upside down in the back here. Oh, right there. Okay, I got to make sure I did it right too. And then, oh, I had this shield in the book. I'll show you. It was like this. It's like, oh, well, how are we doing that? But no, the tail goes. It wraps up and it connects to here. Okay. Right there. Connects right in there. So you have to loop that around. So you go around like that. Whoops. Well, that, uh, just trying to reposition stuff here to kind of make it look better. And boy, this is flaking apart a little bit now. It even shows it with the arrow. We're almost done. We don't have a lot of pieces left, and I got to fire up something on the grill tonight. <laughs> but yeah, um, I save all my stuff when I was a kid. I grew up. I grew up in that time where you saved everything. You didn't toss really anything out. You know how back in the old days of the Depression, way before my time, and. That's what a lot of them do. They just they, they hung on to a bunch of stuff that they may use in the future. So I'm missing a clip here. It's one of oh the ball thing. I think I saw one of those in that random bin. Uh, it's on the other side of the room. You know, one of the things though I kind of regret. I wish I would have stopped my parents, but from selling my old Lego collection, I had a bunch of stuff. Not as much as I have now. It was like maybe a tote, maybe a half the size of this table. Probably, probably by 12, by 15, by 8. It was just, that was, that's all the Lego I had when I was a kid growing up. I didn't have a whole lot, so I uh, kind of wish I had some of the sets back. Unfortunately, I don't, but... It'd be cool to get those back one day or just try to find them. I contacted the person that my parents sold it to and long since they've thrown those away. I mean, literally threw them in the trash. The kids wouldn't play with them anymore. And I was like, really, I was willing to buy those back from you. That thing's rotating around there. All right. Okay, so this goes here. Um, and yeah, be careful, these shields are just barely hanging on. Now we're getting to the point now where this stuff is just falling apart here on this. So the film we're going to make another mirrored. Actually, no, we're not. Rotate it around that way. Now what goes on that other knob? Nothing! Let me look here. 
Or is there not supposed to be anything in that? Let me take a look. It's not going to hurt to browse through the manual. It's only showing that one side there. It's not even showing the other side. Yeah, it doesn't even show that side. But, yeah, I mean, I just hang on to a lot of the stuff that I have. Especially if you're like me and you work your buns off, you don't want to have to just toss it. Yeah, it doesn't even show this piece here. So I don't think this one's supposed to be in here. So I'm going to pop that out. So that's where that one piece went. So you will make some mistakes in here like I have. You know, nothing wrong with that. Use these as a lantern. Oh, wait a minute. that's just an upside down. Uh, you got to feed that in the middle like that. But yeah, um, I hang on to a lot of stuff. Okay, we need to put this handle in here. And it goes somewhere on top. Oh, I see the holder right on top of the dragon here. Okay, so there's a holder up here. And this goes like that. With this thing just hanging down. I'm going to just rotate it to where it's just dangling like that. It looks like he's got some kind of a hat on, like a party hat. And that's it. We have a bunch of slopes left, so what did I forget here? Did I forget anything? I mean, that's a little too much. Let's take a look here and see. Okay, there's supposed to be some on the ears. Alrighty. And then... We've got a good, generous amount of pieces left, except for that one piece, because I remember I had to get out of my own collection, but there it is. So I don't think we were missing anything too elaborate in here. But that's it. I think that hooks on the bottom of that. So... We're going to run through this real quick. I'm just going to rebuild the world. Oh, yeah, I can imagine how brittle that would be, huh? Pretty long brick to make it wrap. And, yes, I used to build animals like that when I was a kid. <laughs> and we got our pieces in the back. Oh, I'd like to find that wig piece. And that's it. Okay, so... Let me get the bin over here, and then we'll start setting a little bit of these up. I'm just going to worry about the floats to see how they work. Okay, so I'm not going to drag everything out right now. Uh, while I'm setting this up, my build experience was excellent with this. I had a good time putting this together. It wasn't boring. It wasn't dry. Um, the only thing that my complaint was was the stickers. Instructions were somewhat easy to follow, but they should have put the highlights in there and stuff like that. Okay. So, um, I'm assuming that there's going to be figures standing on some of this stuff. So I'm going to put some of the figures on now. See if we can get this back here for you so you can actually see the whole show here as best as I can. I can't go back any further, so that'll be it. So yeah, I mean, this was not a bad build, and that's what these are for here, because then you can hitch these up like this, so you can just have them going down the road. Some of this stuff will fall off, so I will mention that. The build, the build quality is, well, okay, but if I'm spending time re-putting parts back on here, it's... It degrades the build quality a little bit, but build experience was perfect on this set. 
it just kept my interest and I wanted to build this it wasn't something I you know if I have to do it for the ambassador thing but this was something I wanted to see done just to see the outcome of the results right, so that's basically what you do like a choo-choo train and then you would just roll this thing around and everything moves okay so let's see here I mean Let's see, let me take a look at that manual that we just had that I lost already. Yeah, there's some figures that go on here. Let me just put these on here real quick while we're doing this. Um, they show you this right here and how to put it together. Okay. There's no mini figures on this. They show the figures on this one. So I may have to look at all the, the stuff in the manuals. So. So this one here just stands by herself. I think this goes on the bottom here. So I'm just going to stick this one on here. It looks like it is, so I'm just going to put that like that. It falls over. And I'm going to start putting some of these guys on here. I try to match the manual, the reason being is, so when I do the review it just makes more sense. And the space guy goes over here on this jumper plate. Hmm, how does he fit on there? It shows him like that, but maybe this needs to be rotated a little bit. Well, he doesn't want to go on there for some reason. We got this captain here, and we have this one guy here. They show that they're in different hands, but I'm just going to put them like this. And he's standing right on the stud right here. And of course, you could do it any way you want. Of course, we got the little kids here just watching. Uh, little Johnny and little Susie. I don't know what their names are. Mr. Bullcut, Mr. Eggercut. But. So this must have been a thing back in the 70s and 80s. And unfortunately, this style, I think it was originated in Texas, but you know, the modern version, but now it's, uh, it's starting to make its way out here. <laughs> I, think, I think every boy, I didn't really have that god-awful cut. I just had the modern 90s version of it. Okay, so yeah, let me get the other manuals real quick here. And I just keep them in this folder that they gave me here. So, um, all in all, though, I would say that this was a, if you get this set for your city, this is a very excellent build experience. It wasn't dry or anything like that. So, let's start putting in the figures on the floats. And we'll see what we can do. So this one here sits in the front here. Put the bunny in there. Well, let's see here. Uh, I'm trying to get her or him in there. It fits right in that little area, but I'm having a hard time. There we go. We better not breathe on that too much. That may just fall off. See if I can raise up the lantern here a little bit so I can level her out. No. There goes the phone. Guess what? I'm off. I'm not answering it with whoever it is unless it's somebody that I want to talk to. <laughs> all right. Um, I'm not going to set up all the figures. I'm just putting the ones on the float right now. There's only one on the float. And for four, five, and six. So when I review this, I'm going to have to review it on a turntable. Oh, playing the violin up here. Wow. Too bad these weren't a little longer here. I mean, I'm sure you can probably take some one by tens and retrofit it and make these a little longer. And we already got her there, and she's playing the drums. So that's what she was. Well, those weren't Morocco's. This was something like a drum here. And her leg is actually hanging off by a stud. I mean, look at that. Now, they better not hit a road. They better not hear a bump in the road, man. She'd be flying off that. She'd be really beating the drums or playing the harp. 
All right, so let's just bring all the figures out, why don't we, here. Um, it's hard to move that on with the rubbery stuff. But yeah, we got a bunch of things that wiggle and jiggle on this. Looks like a train. Everything moves. It's just, I just don't have a big review table. And some of these are just kind of top heavy. Let's see if I can keep him from falling over. But you do get a, a lot of stuff in here. You get a lot of minifigures too. You get a lot of stuff. I mean this set this set gives you a lot. I mean it is not a this is not something that would be considered a junk set. Usually I value, you know, is this going to be a junk set or is this going to be a good set? And just, it's got plenty, plenty of accessories, highly detailed. It's not, it wasn't sloppily built. I'm missing the heads for some of these. I think these two are supposed to hold the heads. So you get these makeshift, I thought these were costume heads, but they just snap on the regular minifigure. And so, quick review. You know, did it keep my interest? Absolutely, yes. Build experience. Yes, really good build experience. Build quality. Uh, for the most part, it's sound, but it's just kind of flaky on some of these little decorative pieces. Um, could you drop this in a city? Obviously, you could, you know, with it being as it is, it would go down a road easily. You put it right between your modulars. The only modification I would do is I'd come in here and make some of these longer chains to connect these these little supports here. This four studs is just not enough. I mean, you don't really get a lot to turn here. So I would maybe extend those out to maybe 10 or maybe use a 1 by 12 so you'd get some more spacing and put these minifigures in between. Uh, mock, you know, very seldom I'll ever say this, but this doesn't even need a mock. I mean, this is self-contained. This is... I mean, you could probably add more on to it. You could. It, it's got provisions where you can add more floats to it. You got spots in the front and spots in the back, so you could actually expand on this or buy another one of these to make it larger. But all it, all around, though, um, I'm very satisfied with this. You know, despite of looking at the box and belly aching, going, oh, oh no, you know. But no, I mean, at the end result here, the box did lie to us. I mean, the color of this box it looked somewhat I eye-catching, but it just seems rather, uh, I don't know, it, I think it was the background that made it look kind of junky, but at the end, though, it's complete, it's solid, uh, and then the stickers, the stickers did detract from the value, so you had to put some, uh, you know, what I call considered a, a hefty amount of stickers, but, uh, but I'm really satisfied with the outcome of this set, so if you're looking at getting this for your LEGO City, uh, yeah, I would highly recommend this for your Lego City. I think this would be a great addition, you know, especially for a seasonal theme. So, uh, the only bad thing I have to say really about it is the stickers. But other than that, though, it's uh, it's a really good build all around.